Well, hello, and I'm glad you made it back for another episode of the Bible in one year with the preacher's husband. Today, we're going through 2 Samuel chapter 8 and 9, and also 1 Chronicles chapter 18. Now, tomorrow, we're going to do Psalms again, so we'll do Psalm 50, 53, 60, and 75. Now, we're talking today about David's victories, and I'm going to throw a map up here so you can kind of follow along. I know they're small, but this just gives you an idea of what we're looking at and how we're, do, how we're going to get there. So David defe defeated the Philistines right off the bat. He subdued them and took Metheg Amah from Philistine control. Now, the Philistines were never again a serious threat to Israel after David subdued them, as it says here. And that Metheg Amah place... That word literally translated means bridle of the cubit. So, in reality, this is an unknown place. This is not some place that we have a clue where it was. Some people suggest that the expression is figurative and not really a place. And that indicates that David took the bridle or the reins of leadership from his enemies. Meaning, he didn't just beat them in this one town. He beat them all over the place and subdued them completely. And he became their leader. So they would never be a problem again. Whatever he said went when it came to the Philistines after this. So, that's one thing. Then he defeats the Moabites. And David allowed one third of their defeated army to live. Now, many kings of that time would not have been so merciful in most cases when you got beat they wiped you out and killed everybody but that's not what david did and then he defeated um hadadezer son of rehob the king of zobah wow the king of zobah now his conquest here of hadadezer and other aramean rulers david gained control as far as the euphrates river so that was a huge tactical advantage that was a big thing when the aramaeans came to assist because the aramaeans they were like brothers anybody in those areas that came to fight kings in that areas all the aramaeans would usually band together to go help out um, but david struck them down to 22,000 of them died um, he placed gar garrisons in Aram of Damascus, and the Arameans became David's subjects and brought tributes to him. In other words, gold, bronze, silver, things like that. Then David took the gold shields of Habadezer's officers and took those to Jerusalem as well. And he also took huge quantities of bronze from other cities. Now, when King Toy of Hamath heard about what David had done and how David had defeated Hadadezer, he sent his son Joram to David to greet him and congratulate, congratulate him because David had defeated King Hadadezer, who Toy had fought with over and over again. They had many wars against each other. So I guess he was claiming, the enemy of my enemies is my friend in this scenario. So King David took... Um, basically a bunch of bronze, silver, and gold from him as well that um, Joram gave and brought to him. But he had all of this dedicated to the Lord. Instead of using it for his own self, he dedicated it to the Lord and gave it to the God's use. Um, we find out later on that most of this bronze, silver, and gold that David has taken was used by Solomon to build the temple so it was used for the Lord eventually um, David made a reputation for himself when he returned from striking down 18,000 Edomites in the Salt Valley as well I found that pretty fascinating and he placed garrisons throughout Edom and all the Edomites were subject to David in other words David ruled them as well the Lord made David victorious wherever he went then we're going to move on to 2 Samuel chapter 9, David's kindness to Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth. Now, David here was determined to fulfill his promise regarding Saul's family, particularly for Jonathan's sake. And remember, we read about this in 1 Samuel chapter 20, verses 14 and 15, and also 1 Samuel chapter 23, verses 17 and 18. Um, Mephibosheth was actually Jonathan's son, but he was injured in both feet. So he couldn't walk very well, probably was on crutches of some sort, and he was kind of hobbled. 
Um, David told him, don't be afraid. Any descendant of Saul might expect the new king would kill him because typically when a king takes over from another king, he tries to wipe out all the people that were associated with the old king. But that's not how David was. Um, instead, he decided he was going to restore Saul's fields near Gabeah, and that would provide Jonathan's son income for many future years. Plus, he also granted the, him the privilege of eating regularly with him in the palace, which was kind of unheard of. Now, this guy, Ziba, he was given the task of caring for Jonathan's son's estate. And he submitted to David's command at first, though. But later on, we're going to find out that he actually attempted to secure the estate for himself instead and for his 15 sons. We'll read about that later in um, chapter 16 and chapter 19. But um, I found it interesting that when he talked about him eating at David's table just like one of the king's sons it was kind of a touching comment in light of his father Jonathan's earlier prediction to David um, a prediction that n did not come true that was that prediction from 1 Samuel chapter 23 verse 17 if you want to review that um, it didn't come true because Jonathan died in battle before it could happen so David took took the son um, of his brother by covenant and treated him as a son and then we get um, Mephibosheth had a young son whose name was Micah and we find that later Micah is going to have four sons of his own and as we'll read in first chronicles chapter 8 verse 35 that's it for today that's all we got We'll see you tomorrow for some more Psalms. I hope this has touched you. If it has, click the like button and the subscribe button. And of course, click the little jingle bell so you can get notified the next time I upload a video. And we will see you then. Arrivederci.